Well, this time I thought I'd do something a little different that hopefully be instructive to someone. We have a, uh, doing this outdoors, we have a we have a good little dog. He's a great dog. He's a rescue. He wants to be good. He's fairly timid. Uh, he's a, a rat terrier, Jack Russell type. Very energetic. Um, he's like six years old, has a lot of energy, bounding around. But And we like him to run around free in our backyard here. So the wife has uh, good luck with electric uh, uh, fences, little radio fences, where he can wear a collar if he gets too close to the wire. It uh, gives him a warning beep, which is usually enough. He really wants to be good, and once he hears that beep, boy, he uh, jumps back because he does not want to get stung by the little bee uh, collar. But uh, if it's not working, and we actually had a... Uh, this is a very big loop. It goes around from our garage up there. Speak, there he is. There he is, little sociable guy. See, he's already up to the fence here. Uh, this has worked great for years, but on and off, uh, being outdoors, it does need some service. Uh, even last year, we had a lightning strike a neighbor's tree, which uh, knocked out a whole bunch of things. Uh, not too bad, but uh, we eventually found that the uh, energizer for the loop was, was gone, which makes sense. I mean, it's a big loop and a big electromagnetic impulse right next door. And it worked and then uh, stopped working and got intermittent. So I'm checking out the big loop and basically just doing a big visual inspection and found several bad splices up here and got over here and then I found this splice which is not even a splice uh, well it's a splice but I cannot believe that I did that Marty's gonna be on the fence. Marty! Get back here. It's just you know wound together looks like a did it very quickly, hastily. Didn't even put tape on it. Others I had tape on. So I'm uh, going out and doing these right. So how do you do that? I have a portable repair kit, which is a good old Weller soldering gun, which actually dropped on the floor the other day, and I had to tape the bits back together, but it keeps on working. Some solder, some shrink tubing, a little uh, lighter, pliers, strippers, and to make it portable, just a little 12 volt battery. This is a 12 volt 8 amp hour. You don't use it very much in an inverter, 401 inverter, to power the uh, power the soldering gun. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this one, and I'll be back and show you a bit later. So there we have it, a good old uh, Western Union type splice with a lot of heat and solder put on it, make sure it's good and good conductivity. Uh, first step after trimming the ends is always put the heat shrink on the wire. You don't want to solder it together then realize you left off the heat shrink. Mm -hmm. And um, put the heat shrink on, shrink it, that should be good, waterproof. Worked fine, last long time. Now we finish the visual inspection. I'm about halfway done, and I found, like I said, three bad ones. So I think we're closing in. The the loop, once it's done, has a total resistance of should be around 10 ohms. Uh, while it was broken here, I was measuring something like you know, hundreds of k ohms, so it definitely had a problem. And we'll get it going here shortly. Well, after. Uh, Going around the complete back, fixing a few weak joints. Uh, we had a tree fall the other day, actually, last weekend. This uh, Sunday I've been working on that and uh, got up to here. I found the wire pulled under one of the fallen branches and a complete break. So that's where the, uh, <clears throat> the major malfunction was. It was intermittent, sometimes works, depending on rain, humidity. Now it's completely open and that uh, several hundred K is probably my finger resistance so let's fix this and we're almost done using the uh, portable kit well I finally, finally made it all around the loop uh, all the way around the backyard so let's
try it out and see what happens. Get up to the uh, trusty Mushimeter and see what we get here. It says K ohms, 8 ohms. Big long loop around the yard. We got 8 ohms, so we have continuity. Oh boy, um, that should last a while, barring any more breaks, but that's uh, fences for you. They always need repairing. So I just had to tidy that up. Oh, uh, while doing the last bit, this one joint here, the, the wire was just so corroded it would not take solder at all. I heated that for minutes and minutes and finally had to trim some back until I get some good wire, scrape off the corrosion, got good joints. So as far as I know, it's good all the way around. Lots of uh, splices, but that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. You just splice it and go. Well, we got the uh, wires all run. There's one uh, solid yellow, and there's another one goes up there. And they come in here to the garage. I'm going to plug this guy in. And where it used to beep, the little center switch in the center. Where it used to beep, now it's solid. And with this, you start fully clockwise, you turn it back. Until it starts to beep, and then you advance it until it stops. And that's the minimum size donut around the wire. If I turn it any more clockwise, it will make the donut bigger and the range from the fence uh, further. Well, let's go check it out with a Go check it out with a collar. And I have a neon bulb with that too. Which we might be able to see in the day. And lastly, here's the collar that the dog wears. Keeps him uh, disciplined and out of the road. So as we approach the fence, I don't know if you can hear that. There's the warning beep. And now it's doing the Neon. This is one of the more advanced ones. You can have several levels of uh, several levels of discipline for your dog. But it is working, and tonight he will not cross the fence. He will relearn very quickly.